Hey, 42 here. Nobody can predict how long humanity has left on this planet. According to climate alarmists with a latter-day Joan of Arc at their masthead, we have about 10 to 20 years before humanity is killed off by its own industrial desires. But more rational science says we have anywhere from 50 to hundreds of years before the effects of climate change reach the point of no return. If However, climate change either turns out to be the biggest scam in human history, or technology comes to the rescue and reverses CO2 emissions, then we could be in for a significantly longer stay on this planet. The optimist in me believes both of these options are much more likely than what the doom mongers are espousing. But climate change isn't the only threat to our survival. Other risks include nuclear war, famine, an asteroid strike, a deadly disease pandemic, or killer AI robots. Whatever is the cause of Earth's demise and whenever it happens, humanity will have hopefully spread out into space and colonised other planets, other solar systems, or other galaxies, and humanity may survive. But back on Earth, what would happen if, hypothetically, every human alive suddenly disappeared tomorrow? And in millions of years' time, when the intergalactic aliens return to explore the lost place an intelligent species once called home, will they discover any remnants of human life? Will they be able to tell we were here? After nature has reclaimed everything we know, how would they know that anyone ever lived on this hunk of rock? What is the very last thing that humanity will leave behind? I will tell you at the end of this video, and the answer is rather disturbing. But first, let's walk through our hypothetical scenario. So, every human on the planet has disappeared. What would be the very next thing to disappear? Well, it would be the noise. Within seconds, planet Earth would be cloaked in a spine-chilling silence. Globally, the two biggest sources of constant background noise are human voices and traffic. With no human activity and nobody around to drive vehicles, the constant low-frequency background hum you have grown accustomed to will stop. Go to any isolated, expansive nature reserve today, and you'll quickly realise that, even with all those animals and birds, it seems blissfully quiet. Humans are tremendous noise polluters. The next thing to go will be the great machines of industry and energy production that keep civilization running. Within a few days to a few weeks, every means of power production will shut down. Coal and gas-fired power plants would be the first to go as they would quickly run out of fuel. Nuclear reactors, on the other hand, are refueled just once every two years. But after a couple of weeks, their automated computer systems would safely shut them down to prevent a meltdown. We are long past the Chernobyl days when human activity was the arbiter standing between a safe shutdown and a meltdown. Computer systems have long been in place to halt reactors before critical conditions can be reached. So, even without a single human to watch them, the likelihood of a nuclear disaster in modern reactors is actually somewhat low. Although there are a number of older nuclear power plants dotted around the globe that certainly would fail and release toxic radiation into the atmosphere, there could be enough to induce a nuclear winter. Even wind farms would grind to a halt due to a lack of lubricant after a few months, and solar panels would eventually collect too much dust and debris on their surfaces to function. Fairly quickly, planet Earth would go dark and be instantly thrown back into the Stone Age. Within the first two months, the pets that are able to escape their abodes and avoid starvation would become feral. Meanwhile, wild animals would gain the courage to enter and reclaim our cities. They would now be the masters. Next to reclaim cities would be Mother Nature. Within as little as five years, the great cities of the world, Tokyo, London, New York, would be consumed by plants ivy and moss would scale the tallest skyscrapers, whilst down below the sidewalks and roads would be torn apart by weeds and trees, pushing their way through the cracks. Within 25 years, desert cities like Dubai and Las Vegas will be encased in a mountain of sand. 
In the immediate decades after our disappearance, the cities and great megastructures that stand as monoliths of human trade, industry and art would begin to crumble. Due to a lack of general maintenance, weather erosion and plants winding their way through mortar and metal, even the sturdiest man-made structures would eventually give way. Within 300 years, most of Earth's suspension bridges will collapse and crash into a watery tomb. After 700 years, many brick and wood buildings, specifically the millions of square miles of suburbs, would be consumed by nature and begin to rot, crumble and fall. The steel and glass which makes up most of our megacities would wear a little better. Although consumed by nature and now home to a menagerie of wild animals, it would be roughly 7,000 to 10,000 years before they collapse into a heap of dust. Cities like Singapore would stand for thousands of years as an eerie, natural theme park, a museum of a lost civilization. Stone buildings would last for a few millennia too. Stone is one of the least reactive building substances, so it has a tendency to endure for a long, long time. That's why we still have Roman architecture to marvel at 2,000 years later. After 50,000 years, if aliens visited Earth, there would be no visible signs that an intelligent species ever lived here. Mother Nature would have returned the Earth almost entirely to its pre-human state. But there is one man-made structure that would still stand millions of years after all traces of humanity have long vanquished into the soil. Can you guess what it is? No, it's not Knutsford Services. It is that other great tourist attraction, Mount Rushmore. Rushmore is carved out of granite, the second hardest naturally occurring material on Earth after diamond. Granite is also extremely stable and largely unreactive. With the mountain reaching over 1,700 meters tall, water erosion is unlikely to be an issue. And being located in one of the most landlocked locations in the United States, the moisture in the air contains very little salt from the ocean here, so what wind erosion there is, is extremely gentle. All of these factors means that Mount Rushmore erodes at a rate of 1 inch per 10,000 years. After 1 million years, there will be a slight loss of definition to the famous faces, but it's estimated to be at least 7.2 million years before the presidents are no longer recognisable. Yet, after all this time, you would still be able to make out the basic round shapes of their heads. That's incredible. But fast forward to 10 million years after humans quit planet Earth, and there will be no visible signs of our civilization. All books and records of thousands of years of human endeavor will be long gone. By this point, the unrelenting force of entropy will have taken its cruel toll, and the once ordered hive of humanity will have disintegrated into a chaotic maelstrom of natural obsolescence. There will be zero evidence of our story. Or will there? Perhaps there is one thing that we will leave behind. If you want to know what humanity will leave behind, well, there is only one thing that will always be here. A permanent ring we have carved into our planet's tree trunk. There is one, and only one, human creation that Mother Nature can never entirely get rid of. Plastic. You may have heard that plastic can take hundreds or even thousands of years to decompose, but that's not the full story. Decomposition is defined as microbial organisms feeding on a material and thus breaking it down and, through enzymatic action, transforming it into another substance. In other words, what we observe as rotting. The issue with plastic is that, unlike almost every other substance, microorganisms don't feed on it they simply don't recognise it as food. But if I leave a plastic bag outside, it won't still be in one piece in 10 years time, never mind a few million years. True, but when plastic breaks down, it isn't actually decomposing. At least not in the way that the commonly accepted scientific definition of decomposition describes. Plastic simply breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces of plastic. 
Plastic is created from polymers, synthetically derived from oil. Sure, plastic starts life as a natural substance, but by the end, there is nothing natural about it. Unlike an apple or a piece of wood, in millions of years, a plastic water bottle left somewhere in the wilderness will still exist as plastic. It will just be in millions of tiny plastic pieces and distributed over hundreds, potentially thousands of miles. Some pieces will be in the soil, some in the ocean, but many will have embedded themselves permanently into Earth's rock layer. This means that in millions of years, aliens will find a planet with no immediate trace of human civilization. But when they dig a little deeper, perhaps by mining and examining rocks, they will find something odd. They will discover that the entire planet is coated with a seamless layer of plastic. Because humans have already created enough plastic to coat the Earth many times. Like a disturbing but telling mark eternally etched into the planet's long, historic rock record. This plastic layer, by that point in time, will be many miles under the Earth's surface, but it will be there. A sad but perpetually present monolith to Homo sapiens' brief, brief existence. That is, unless scientists are successful in developing microorganisms that can digest plastic, decomposing it properly, which is exactly what some laboratories are currently doing. But in this scenario, we are presuming that humans disappeared tomorrow, before such an invention. But don't get downbeat, because I have full and, I think, justified confidence that this is not the future of humankind. Plastic use is a short-term issue that will hopefully be solved very soon by a raft of competing technological advances, of which there are many in the pipeline. And as for our survival, who knows? We may still be inhabiting the planet in some form in 10 million years, if not many, many other planets too. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider supporting me on Patreon using the link in the description. It really, really helps me to continue to make these videos. Also, I've just launched my first book, Sticker Flag in It, a thousand years of bizarre history from Britain and beyond. If you would like to get your hands on a first edition signed copy, then head on over to Unbound Publishing, the link's in the description. Thank you.